And let's commit the, the, the service and the worship time to, to, to God. Lord, we just thank you for today. So many things are happening around this world, Lord, and we, we are just so thankful that we can come here for the next hour or so and just focus on you, focus on, on this church family and how we can worship you and serve you. And Lord, we, we thank you for Jesus and what he did for us on the cross and our salvation through him. In Jesus' name, amen. So there's a lot of stuff going on in our church family, and that's a good thing, but it's a bad thing for the guy who's got to announce them all the announcements and all the stuff that we've got. So, but there's a lot of stuff going on. It's really exciting time. I don't know why we're starting the summer break, and uh, but we're still, it's a really exciting time. So bear with me. First announcement. So we do have a congregational meeting, not this Wednesday, the following Wednesday on uh, June 19th. And it's the last meeting that we have before before we vote on the new pastor. So if you want to become a member, you got to get your membership package in before next Sunday. So we have a few packages still here. We handed out a few. So if you're interested in becoming a member, and if you have attended the church for more than six months, please, for the last six months, just please just check to see if you have a membership, if we have a membership package. And if we don't have one, we can email you one or something. So, But they have to be in by next Sunday. So in two weeks, we have um, a past pastor candidate coming to preach to us. So it's going to be two weeks Sunday. His name is Earl Johnson. I hope you all received that email that Sarah sent around introducing him a little bit. We spoke a little bit about last week. I just want to let you know that this has been uh, a six-month project that we've been looking into. So this, there was a pastor search committee of made up of seven people, cross-sectional representative of the entire church. Someone representing the youth, someone representing the elderly, someone representing you know, the deacons, the elders, and we all got together in January. We met every two weeks or, or more. And, uh, oh, here, thanks. And there's a one thing that we had to, we agreed on, it, any decision we had was unanimous. There was no split decisions or there's no majority rules. Everybody had to agree on every move that we push forward. So during this time, we, uh, we put on two Christian web websites for job postings about our church and about a pastor that we're looking for. We collected all the res resumes, a few dozen of them, and of those few dozen, we looked at the criteria that we had that we got from the congregation when we asked what you guys wanted in a pastor, and we selected four individuals to move to the interview process. So Errol, he was one of the first one, and he came to the interview process, we interviewed him. The other three, they either came to the interview process and then withdrew themselves afterwards or withdrew themselves just prior to the interview uh, the process. So at the end of the day, it was almost as if for me, it was the Holy Spirit just weeding everything out for us. So we had four, and the only person that we had at the end of the day standing was, was Errol. Then he went through another process, a written interview. So the committee sent him some questions, some you know personal questions, some doctrinal questions, and he, he responded. And again, the committee said, well, yeah, we, we were satisfied with his answers, and we went to the next step, which was to invite him to meet you guys. And now he's going to be preaching on, uh, on the Sunday and two Sundays from now. He will be coming that Friday. And we are trying to, as a pastoral search committee, trying to organize things for the church to meet him. So for sure, after his sermon, he's going to, we're going to have a little finger foods in the back, and you're going to be able to talk to him. But during the Friday and Saturday, we'll try to organize things that he can meet either groups within the church or and even the entire church at a barbecue or something like that. But we're going to be meeting today as a, uh, no, uh, on Tuesday as a pastoral search committee, and we're going to decide if anyone, uh, what we're going to do that weekend. So if anyone has any ideas, yeah, just let us know. But as a, as a search committee, we're going to decide what's going to happen on that with his permission, because maybe Errol doesn't want to meet all of you guys. I know he does. But he... Uh, we're going to ask him what he prefers to do as that weekend as well. So, so that's, that's the thing. So in two weeks, 
we're going to be uh, seeing him. He's going to be coming in, and we're going to be voting on him the following week after he preaches. And you have to be a member of that of the church in order to have a say in that. Next. So save the date. There's ladies' night out this Wednesday here uh, at 7 p.m. So all ladies over 16 and over are welcome to attend. You can bring a friend and a treat to share. There's a new YFC ministry happening. So if you like Zumba, you will like this class. It's called Fun Fit, and it's for females of all ages, not only open to our church, but also in the community. So Saturday mornings from 10 to a.m., 10 to 11 at the Kin across the street. So see Robin Mohammed for details for that. And Dan would like to present this. Thanks, Dan. Um, next one is a youth nights, Friday nights, 7.30 to 10, to 10 at the Kin. So reserve with Rebecca. So starting July 4th, the youth will move to Thursday nights, not Friday nights, so Thursday nights at the Kin for the summer, 7.30 to 10, and again, well, no, not again, you, you reserve with Scotia. So it's Rebecca's daughter. Gals and goodies Tuesdays, 7 to 9 p.m. for girls grades 7 to 11. The study books cost $20, and you can reserve with Scotia. And then those are the adventures for guys in grades 7 to 11, Saturdays. It's going to happen on July 6th, the 20th, the 10th, 17th, and you can contact, again, Scotia for uh, more, more information. At this point, I'd like to ask Mark to come up. All right. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. I said last Sunday that I was looking for a young uh, gentleman, looking for the guys first. You already had a turn, but thank you. He was the first guy to, to give me the memory verse, 2 Corinthians 10, verse 5, but he did it privately. He didn't do it in front of the church. So any guys under 16, let's say, come on up. Otherwise, all this is going to the girls again. This is our last Sunday for 2 Corinthians 10, chapter, chapter 10, verse 5. This is the last Sunday, folks. Guys, you're, 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 not, you're not pulling your weight. Where's our, where's our young men? All right, I'm going to have to change the verse up. Girls, there are a couple girls that wanted to do this. You spoke to me already. Pillar, come on up. You were one. Is it on the screen? Turn around. Don't, don't look. We'll look that way. 2 Corinthians. Good job, good job. Any version counts. It doesn't, doesn't have to be the new international version. It doesn't it can mean anything. One more. This is it. This last Sunday. There was one who said yes. It was, nope, it was you, I think, wasn't it? Yes, come on up. Whisper. Or was it you? I can't remember. Whisper. Look that way. Yes. Nice job. Nice job. Okay, so at this time we'll ask uh, Aksana to come up. Good morning, everybody. So the last few weeks I've been kind of having a tough time. So I'm up here to share and hopefully help out anyone else. Um, so lately, there's no word that I hate more than the word enough. I hate this word with a passion because whenever it is used, my heart starts to race, my stomach falls to my feet, and my f eyes fill with tears. Because I know, no matter what I do, I'll never be enough. Not enough to meet other standards or expectations or even my own. Not smart enough, not funny enough, 
not pretty or skinny enough, not nice enough, not likable enough, not popular or friendly enough. This is what I tell myself because I know, I know that there's absolutely nothing I can do to be enough for everyone else and myself. So why try? I'm just hurting myself and those around me. I feel anxious and insecure. School isn't helping. The people I thought I could trust are hurting me. So why keep going? Why not just stop? I struggle with this a lot. But even though it's really tough, I think I know the answer. Although the devil is constantly throwing his lies at me like wet blankets, I know that God's truth can take me out of these heavy lies. I know I am too hard on myself, and I know there's nothing I can do to be who everyone else wants me to be, but I'm realizing now that even though I screw up, I am exactly who God has created me to be. I am wonderfully and perfectly made, and he sees me and knows that I'm doing the best that I can. I know that throughout my life, there are going to be many, heavy, many more heavy lies thrown at me, but I know that I need to just keep on repeating God's truths until I can believe them one by one, day by day, because through everything I know, I may never be enough, but God will continue to love me anyway, because he doesn't need anything from me except his trust. I am exactly who he says I am. Let's, let's just pray for Oksana now together, please. Our Heavenly Father, we rejoice in knowing that you do not make mistakes. You looked at the world and said it was good. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you have blessed Oksana with these words of insight, this revelation, that she has been made good through the blood of Jesus Christ again. And Lord, I just pray that you would impress upon her that she is everything that you need her to be. And anyone else who is going through a similar situation that Oksana is, Thank you for her. Thank you for her praise and glory to you. And I pray that you will bless her as she strives to continue to serve you and build your kingdom. I ask this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Thank you. And just be before we ask the, uh, the music team to come up, we'd just like to welcome some new visitors here. Welcome back to Donna Monroe. She's a... Uh, Way in the back. Robin Papp? Where's Robin? Oh, there you are. Hey, Robin. <laughs> and a first time visitor for you guys, but I know this guy, Ye Chen Bay. He's right here He's with Ava. Okay, so the music team.
indeed belong to you because everything is yours. And we give you praise and honor and glory. And we welcome you, Holy Spirit, into this place. We thank you for the forgiveness that comes through Jesus Christ shed blood on the cross. It's because of him that we gather here as your people to worship and praise and glorify your name. May your kingdom be advanced, Jesus, we ask in your holy name. Okay, so at this point of the service, we have something very special today. We have some uh, a family or child dedication, and Mark will be speaking to that. At this point in our worship of God, we give particular attention to God's gift of children. Brett Britton, the mother of Faith Ann and Janine, wishes to present her daughters to God in the presence of God's people, to dedicate herself to the Christian nurture, and to ask you for your support in this great privilege and responsibility. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is the Lord of our lives. And by his lordship, he calls us to gather together as the church. He is the head of the church. And we wish to raise our children to follow him. When a child is born, we are full of hope. We pray that our children will be blessed and that as parents and family, we will do all that is right for our children's nurture. But we know that life in this broken world has its share of sorrow as well as joy, sickness as well as health, and poverty as well as riches. The society we live in will demand much from Faith Ann and Janine and from you, Brett. You can bring your family up. Join us here, please. And to overcome the evil in this world, the scriptures instruct us to rely on our faith in Jesus Christ and to have a greater knowledge of his word and to seek to obey his word with all of our being. Hear now what the word of God says about children. From Psalm 127 verse 3, children are a gift from God. Deuteronomy 6 Verses 5 to 7. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you're at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Brett, you have brought your children to be blessed today. Will you commit yourself to raising faith and and journeying with Janine in the faith by making these promises? Do you recognize and solemnly declare your dependence upon the Almighty God for the wisdom, help, and blessing that you will need to guide and nurture your children? Do you commit yourself to instruct your child, Faith Ann, and support your child, Janine, in the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ to read the word regularly and to pray with and for your children? Do you intend to raise up your daughter, Faith Ann, and encourage your daughter, Janine, in the church family with the prayer that in due time, Faith Ann may receive... Faith Ann may receive Jesus Christ as her personal Savior and Lord. And Janine will continue to grow and mature in her faith in Jesus Christ. I do. <laughs> Brett is relying upon us as God's people to support and help her to raise and encourage her children <clears throat> in the faith. This means teaching in the Sunday school, supporting our children's programs, our youth group, welcoming and treating children and young people and young adults as valued members of our church family. Being patient with them as they grow 
and learn. And above all, praying for our children and our youth individually and as a group. If you will make these commitments with me, please stand and join me in prayer. There's a prayer that I'd like us to pray on the screen in unison for, for Brett and her family. Let's pray that prayer now. Loving Father, we read your people. Pray for Brett and Faith Ann and Janine. Guide her in the ways of truth. Sustain her in times of difficulty and bless her with the joys of life in Christ. We commit ourselves to the Christian nurture of all the children you have entrusted to our care. We offer you ourselves, our time, and our gifts in this ministry. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. It's time now. You ready? Faith Ann, may the Lord bless you and keep you all the days of your life. Amen. Amen. Janine, May the Lord bless you and keep you all the days of your life. Amen. Amen. And Brett, this isn't on the script, but I'm going to do it because it seems appropriate. We stand behind you as God's people, and the Holy Spirit carries you all the days of your life. Amen. God bless you. It's a it's a church that's uh, alive, and we uh, we have to continue praying for our church that we continue as members to continue seeking God's will as Brett is and her family, and and even having a compassion like Mark who has so much joy that when someone gives their life to Christ, it's emotional, and I think we should all feel that way. So at this point, as another son of a healthy church, we'll let the young people and children go to Sunday school. Let's hear all the noise that they make. Hope they make a lot of noise. That's a good sign. You know, God's word is a, it's a two-edged sword. Eh? It pierces everything. It pierces the young, the old, everybody. This is not an old person's religion. This is God's word and God's worship of him, a true and living God. So I was going to be looking at, at the uh, prayer log and see how we can pray for our, each other. So we have uh, Randy Mohammed. He's got an exam in, in uh, Kingston this Thursday, uh, June 13th, for his new job at the Waterworks Department. Uh, for the township of North Langury. So we pray for his safety as he goes there and for good recall during the exams for the things that he worked hard to do and to remember as he does that exam. We pray for uh, Philip Summers as he manages people for the summer position and ask for guidance as he deals with human resource management issues and challenges that he had for his job. Next four requests are to do with health reasons or health issues. So we pray for Pat Lyell. She's in the hospital now with great pain. They can see no reason for the pain. So Pat Lyell. Well, Mary Michelle, uh, my daughter-in-law, Gandia, is at home. Well, actually, she's still in the, probably in, the, in the emergency this morning. Um, so I was there this morning with her, with Jordan. Uh, she has a stiff neck pain. She can't move her neck. Uh, she just, at the emergency, she, I think she'll be okay, but we continue praying for it. That's not, nothing very serious. A blessing there is that we get to have Sophia this morning, and she was really a joy for us this morning as she was eating breakfast and singing with us. It was really funny. Uh, pray for Savannah Goulet. She's been sick for a while. Pray for safety for Rebecca and Scotia as they travel and spend quality time together this week. And we pray for healing for Prince, Prince de Souza. He was diagnosed with influenza A, and he's been sick for a while. So with these things and other things that you will get in the announcements, we'll just 
lift up this corporate prayer to God as a group. Lord, we just thank you for you are a God who listens to us. We come to your throne because of Jesus, what he's done for us, Lord, and we can petition and we can ask, Lord, we have life happening and we pray that you give the wisdom for the people who are seeking your will and seeking to to move on in this life and we pray for the sicknesses that we have in our congregation those who have been spoken here today and those who have, are not we know it's a it's a fallen world lord but we know that we bring everything to you we pray for healing we pray for peace in you and with this in jesus name amen Good morning, church. I'm in the middle of, I don't normally bring my phone up with me, but there is uh, one other announcement that we need to bring to your attention. There is an NA meeting. You've heard of AA, right? This is NA, Narcotics Anonymous, that just opened in Alexandria every Monday at 8 p.m. And if anybody needs details on location, please contact Mandy Sharon. Her hand is up. She's kind of in the middle towards the front. That's Mandy. NA is perfect for anyone who desires to get their life back from the awful disease of addiction, from drugs to alcohol. Our main focus is to get clean and help the addict who still suffers. If you want help with drugging or drinking, this is for you. Also, NA is not only for the addict who still suffers, it's also for the recovering addict. All of our experiences help us to stay clean. Together, we unite and can live again. So Monday nights at 8 p.m. I want you to know, especially in these days leading up to uh, a vote for a new pastor, that I am really thankful for the opportunity and the privilege that you have given me over these last few months to speak with you, to grow together, to learn from the Word of God. I've been negligent in stating how much this means to me. And it was Pastor Earl who actually brought it to my attention. I was listening to one of his sermons. And at the very beginning, he said, Good morning! Welcome, family. Thank you for the opportunity. To, and he went on, and I was like, oh my goodness. How many times have I stood here? And I haven't thanked the people, God's people, the church. So thank you. Thank you very much. Now, nobody panic again, okay? This is not Father's Day. <laughs> it's not Father's Day. We're one week away from Father's Day. All right? It's next Sunday, June 16th. But we're going to have some special speakers on that Sunday, speaking about tithing, and they're giving their testimony. And then the Sunday following that, Pastor Earl Johnson will be here speaking. He's going to be preaching a call to our church. And again, I want to emphasize what Reuben said. If you don't have your membership forms completed, you will not be able to vote on the Sunday following, which is June the 30th. Only members are allowed to vote for who our next pastor will be. So that means by June the 16th, next Sunday, your membership forms must be submitted. All right? Because that gives us three days before the 19th where we can interview everybody. Okay? So June 16th, all the forms must be in, or you're not a member, and unfortunately you will not be able to vote. But this is very exciting, and I'm encouraged that he's accepted our call to come, and he's coming to meet us all, he's coming to preach to us, and really he's coming to determine God's will for his life and for our church. So, in order for all those events to take place, I'm going to bring a Father's Day challenge to us all today 
which is a week early. So let's begin with this. I like definitions. A father may contribute to existence, but a dad contributes to a life fostering growth, resilience, and the courage to face life's obstacles, sorry, life's challenges. That's an anonymous quote. I don't know who said that. So I'm thinking maybe next Sunday should be called Dad's Day instead of Father's Day, if I could rename it. I don't think they've asked my opinion, but we really do want to celebrate those men in our lives who've played a role, not simply as a father who helped bring us into the world, but a dad who helps us exist in the world. Really, this quote is another way of saying a father is a biological term, but a dad is a real parent. There are so many different definitions of what it means to be a father versus a dad. But this morning, I want to look at two great examples of great dads who demonstrate some godly attributes that can help define a real man who has been given the title of dad. I hope to give us, all of us men who are dads, a challenge to live up to, a goal to strive towards, and an inner desire to fulfill our calling as godly dads. So we're going to start with a dad who I believe does not get enough airtime. He's always in the background, but he does his job as a dad very admirably. His name? Joseph, the husband of of Mary, who was the mother of Jesus. This Joseph was Jesus' earthly dad, but not his biological father. For as we know, Mary was pregnant at the time of their engagement through the Holy Spirit. Matthew 1.18 says, This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. The next verse, verse 19, tells us the first godly characteristic about Joseph. Look at how he is described. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. Now, in first century Judea, an engagement was the same as being married, except no sexual relations had taken place until, until they actually lived together. And that's when they formalized the marriage. Joseph was within his rights to expose Mary and to publicly shame her. He chose not to because he was a man of divine and moral laws. He was an upright man. He was a righteous man, the Bible says. Dad, we need to be an example to our children in how we live our lives. Make moral decisions and follow God's divine laws. We need to be upright in our character before God and before our families. Then we read about another characteristic about Joseph in verse 20. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Joseph was a reflective and a careful man, especially in his actions. The angel encouraged him not to be afraid, but it's okay, you're going to go against societal norms and you're going to take this pregnant woman into your life as your wife. No doubt he was scared to face the humiliation and mockery and shame from the people who would heap abuse upon him. It's a lot of pressure 
for a man who was not responsible for bringing this child into the world. And today, this is a special shout out to those dads who take on the role of being a dad to someone else's children. It's not easy, but you are being a real man and a real dad. So, what did Joseph decide? Verse 24 says, He did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. Did you hear that? He stayed with his wife and he took her home. Joseph is present for his wife and his family. How many homes are broken today because of an absent father? How many wives are doing the jobs of mom and dad? How many children do not have a relationship with their father because their father is not present? There's lots of reasons why. Some are legitimate. There's a death in the family. Sometimes dad's work takes him far away for long periods of time. But most reasons that dad is not there are voluntary. Dad left. Joseph is our example here today, and he stayed. He was present for Mary and for baby Jesus. The next attribute I want to point out in Joseph's role as a godly dad is found here. Matthew 2.13. An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So off he goes with his family to Egypt. After King Herod died, an angel speaks again to Joseph in a dream and told him these words. Matthew 2, verse 20. Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who are trying to take the child's life are dead. Joseph is protecting his family physically. He had already protected them emotionally by staying with Mary and not abandoning her. And now he is protecting them physically. It's their very lives. Dad, we are called to protect our families. Protect your children by showing love to their mother, which gives your children emotional security. And it sets a really good example of what a good functional family should look like so that when your children start a family of their own, they will have a good model to emulate. Protect your family physically. Notice, Joseph was instructed to get up both times in these passages. In other words, he was sleeping and he was instructed to move his family in the middle of the night which he did. This reminds me of a, a story which I've asked our son Jaden if I could share publicly. He said I could. Shelley and I had taken him to a movie in Ottawa. He was about seven or eight years old. And uh, being at that stage of life, you want to be independent. He said, Dad, I need to go to the washroom. I said, okay, I'll come with you. No, no, I'm going to go by myself seven, eight-year-old, right? And we're like, okay, he knows where it is. You just go out of the theater, cross the lobby, and the bathroom's there. So, okay, go ahead, Jaden. And about a minute after he left, something didn't sit right with me. So I, just, I said to Shelly, I'm going to go check and see if Jaden's okay. So I walked the path that he had taken. I walked into the bathroom, and there were two boys in there, older than he was, and by reading the body language of all three of them, 
I knew that Jaden was in a position of being bullied. I wasn't there in time to hear the words that were said, but Jaden informed me afterwards. Dad, I was so glad I saw you. I didn't identify myself as Jaden's father. I just walked into the bathroom. I acknowledged the boys. I said, hey guys. And I think I went to wash my hands or something. <laughs> that was all that needed to happen. Those two guys were gone. I was present. I think dads have a sixth scent. Sense. 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 <laughs> Sorry, back that up. That's a tricky, tricky phrase. Sixth sense. Sense. The sense. They have the sixth sense as well. I think it's kind of built into us as dads. And I think it activates the very first time that we hold our newborn baby son or our newborn baby daughter. There's something that goes off inside a dad at that point. I call it being situationally aware. And if you've seen any of the Jason Bourne movies, you know what I'm talking about. Has anybody seen Jason Bourne? Okay, good. I don't know which one this was. The first, second, third, I, I can't remember. But Jason Bourne doesn't cry. Just <laughs> Maybe he does. Jason Bourne drinks water. In one of the movies, this is to demonstrate what situational awareness is, Jason Bourne doesn't know who he is. He forgets. He's had a memory issue. Knock on the head too many times, something. He's in a restaurant with a, a woman who found him, and she's trying to figure out who he is. And the scene goes something like this. Pretend I'm, I'm Matt Damon. <laughs> okay, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. He says this, I come in here, and the first thing I'm doing is I'm catching the sight lines, and I'm looking for an exit. I can tell you the license plate number of all six cars in the parking lot outside. I can tell you that our waitress is left-handed, and the guy sitting at the counter weighs 215 pounds, and he knows how to handle himself. I know the best place to look for a gun is in the gray pickup truck outside. And at this altitude, I can run flat out for half a mile before my hand starts shaking. Now, why would I know that? How can I know that and not know who I am? So he had some issues to deal with. Let's focus on the situational awareness. How aware are we? physically of what's going on in our lives, in the lives of our children. How aware are we of the spiritual activities in the lives of our children? The point being here, our challenge before us is one, we need to be present, dads, and two, we need to be protective, emotionally protective, physically protective. And to be protective, we need to be situationally aware situationally aware in a physical sense and in a spiritual sense. Now, I have saved the best for the last in our challenge this morning. Our next example I want to draw your attention to is a dad who prayed over his children and prayed for his children. And he did this regularly. We turn to read this in Job chapter 1 says this, his sons, Job's sons, used to take turns holding feasts in their homes and they would invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. When a period of feasting had run its course, Job would send them and have them purified, which is similar to what we do in communion. He would have his children come and tell them to examine themselves, to confess their sins and to ask forgiveness. That's the idea of purification. So he would call them and have them purified. Early in the morning, he would sacrifice a burnt offering for each of them, thinking, perhaps my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. 
This was Job's regular custom. The burnt offering in patriarchal times was offered by each father of the family. He would officiate as a priest on behalf of his household. And literally speaking, the burnt offering means causing to ascend, which is referring to the smoke that would ascend up to heaven. Job did this because his heart was turned toward his children. So they would turn to God. Now, Job was unsure about whether his children had sinned or not, but he wanted to cover them even in the case of unknown sins. That is a real dad to emulate our mo and model our lives after. That is a dad who was situationally aware of the spiritual condition of his children. Dads out there today, we are the spiritual heads of our homes. And we need to be in protective and intercessory prayer for our families, for our children, and to do this regularly. With the blessing of being given children and being granted the title of dad comes the responsibilities of praying for our children and praying over them, as Job did. That is our best weapon in a world of evil and ungodliness that wants to destroy our children's lives. Job knew it, and it has not changed in 2024. Job was a righteous man, and he displayed these actions. Just like Joseph was a righteous man who was present, and he protected his family emotionally and physically. And I am sure that Joseph prayed, just like Job did, for the spiritual and physical protection of his family. Every time Joseph had to get up in the middle of the night and move his family back to an area where he had no plans, no home, he was praying. I can promise you that because he was a righteous man. And that's part of being a righteous man, praying for your family. Can you imagine praying for Jesus? Joseph was Jesus' stepdad. What an honor Joseph had. What a responsibility. What a dad to be given that task. Now, as special as Mary was in being the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, I believe, likewise, that Joseph was chosen to be a very special stepdad to Jesus as well. And if that is your calling today, this morning, then count it as a blessing and take it seriously as a stepdad. You have been given someone else's child to raise, to love, to teach, to guide, to be there for them. What an honor, what a privilege. God trusts you that much and he knows that you are up to the job. So in conclusion, here's our challenge, dads. As we head towards Father's Day next weekend, let's follow the example of Joseph and Job in how they took care of their children. Let us be worthy of the title of dad. Let us consider how we can do what they did. We should think about how to be a triple P papa. We need to be present like Joseph was. We need to be protective like Joseph was, both emotionally and physically. And we need to be praying like Job was. Now there's an example prayer, a really, really good example prayer that Jesus prayed over his disciples and for all believers of all time in John chapter 17. And it really covers all the important elements of what we would want for our children. I'm going to highlight most of them for you right now. This is what Jesus prayed. You should look it up. I don't have time this morning, but look it up 
and pray it over your children. John chapter 17. Jesus prayed this for his disciples and for all believers, and it applies to our children, that they may know Jesus Christ and his word, that God may keep them from the world from falling away and from Satan and false teachers, that they may possess the joy of Christ, that they may be holy in thought, in character, and in deed, that they may lead others to Jesus Christ. That's definitely been one of my prayers for my children. That they love Jesus with the same fervent love that the Father has for Jesus. And that Christ, by His Spirit, may dwell in them and with them. Please stand with me as I close in prayer and I give the benediction and then I'll send you off with a charge. There's one more song after I give the benediction. Heavenly Father, we strive as men to be the dads you have called us to be. I pray a blessing on all the dads and stepdads who are present for their families, who love their children, who watch over them and protect them physically and emotionally. Give an extra measure of strength to those dads who pray regularly for their children. May they have insight, wisdom, and godly perspective to share with their children. God of all, I ask you to sustain and strengthen those mothers who have no husband. For whatever tragic reason it may be, stay close to them as they have a double calling to be mother and father to their children. Protect, encourage, revive, and refresh those mothers who do it alone. May they know you, O Lord, have them in the palm of your hand, and you will carry them through the difficult times in life. I ask this in the all-precious, all-powerful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be the glory forever and ever. Amen. There's one more song. You can take your seats, and then I will dismiss you.
Until we meet again, live quorum Deo before the face of God as the dads and papas you've been called to be. Amen.